Work hard, rock harder. The show that reveals how to get your band the success it deserves. Join Blasco and me, Seth, as we break down how to get more fans, more money, and not get screwed doing it. Hello, I am Chris and Seth Jackson, and welcome to another episode of Work Hard, Rock Harder. No idea what number I'm on. I'll figure that out on another time. <laughs> but today, uh, hopefully I'll keep this short and sweet, but I doubt it because I've just looked at all the shit I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be talking about promoting a song. Uh, Luke Road asked about uh, preparing to release a recording and how to handle press and EBKs and all that other stuff, what you should do to promote a recording. So that's what this episode is going to be about today, the main chunk of it. It's going to be about promoting a song or a recording. And uh, yeah, it's quite a bit on there, so who knows, maybe I might not get through it all, so I might uh, split this into two episodes, but who knows, if I'm fast, might be able to get through it. Okay, but first off, I'm going to get off, kick it off with uh, you know what I've been up to. I've actually been, uh, my band's been taking a break for the month, uh, we're just chilling, relaxing, writing some music, getting our heads together. I've actually taken this time to do a few things. Uh, actually redesigned my website. I use wordpress.org. There's this uh, free software you can use for making a blog website. And uh, I moved everything up to a new theme. It's just the free theme that comes with WordPress called 2012. And I ripped out a whole bunch of stuff. You can see it's really bare bones right now. I only have like a couple little plugins like that thing and this upcoming gigs. But it's really cool because I realized this new uh, layout right here is very mobile friendly. I don't have to do anything. I don't need to add any widgets. I don't need to add anything to make it work on uh, my phone. So I don't know if you can see here. There's also my website. Boom, boom, boom. But, you know, come on twist around and it still displays we're fine and email list there on the side it displays on the iPad it displays on whatever device it just automatically adjusts it's just built into the WordPress theme itself so really stoked about that you know instead of paying a lot of money for these themes that were I played a lot of money for a theme that was not mobile friendly and just did not it wasn't easy to maintain it's kind of sucks so I'm really happy with this new stuff it's really bare bones right now. I've also changed how to run a band.com and uh, did the same thing to it. Um, but working on some things, and you know, I'm sure you don't want to hear too much more about it, but it feels really good to get your website in order. Simplify it, dumb it down a little bit, just keep it really simple and easily maintainable for you instead of chalking up full, a whole bunch of crap. So keep the design simple, and uh, there's another reason I'm keeping it simple, but that'll be another episode. And uh, also on my blog and on the site you can see I've been uh, setting up my email list for my band and the first thing is I put on my website a sign up form I am using this uh, free free service called MailChimp and it's free up to your first 2,000 subscribers and like if you send out 12,000 emails a month so uh, as long as you're under that number the service is free Unfortunately, the free version lacks some features that I really like, but considering I don't have a lot of people on my list right now, I can deal without that until I'm ready to pay. So uh, usually I've been using Aweber, which I really love. I used FanBridge, and I didn't wasn't really into it too much, but um, it was really musician-friendly. But I like MailChimp right now. I'm experimenting with it. It seems pretty cool. And uh, it was really nice to get all my list of emails that I've piled up at shows so far. Just able to hit them in on the back end of this and took a little bit of setup to get that working so um, I can go into that in another time or probably a webinar or something like that but MailChimp if you don't have uh, something right now use MailChimp it's free get your email list going and newsletter going that's a great way to get people to shows and uh, yeah <laughs> I guess I want to show you something else uh, I see a lot of musicians mess this up at their uh, whoops they mess this up at their uh, shows a lot, is not having the email sign-up form. So I'm showing the one that I did, and I want to explain why you would want to do this. See how huge I have, like, a first name and email address? 
That's because it's going to be dark at a club and people are going to be drunk and they got they they need a lot of space to put in their weird long quirky email address. So the more space you put on here for them to do that, the better. Also, uh, at the bottom here, I put in like a you can barely see it, but there's a link to my website, which probably no one at this bar is ever going to see, and there's a QR code right there that also link to the website and I'm pretty sure no one's gonna use that QR code but who knows someone might take a picture of it uh, I don't know if QR codes work or not Dave cool was teasing me the other day for me recommending that but fuck it I'm gonna have whatever I can that could possibly get people to my website and signed up on my form if you can make it happen on people's fucking cell phones all the better because their cell phones less likely to mess up filling out their email address so uh one little thing I just uh, discovered today. This is really cool. I think I mentioned it before. Maybe not on this podcast, but... Oh, yeah. I think I did on the 13 Tools thing, but I just got it. It's called a Freedom Pop. And this thing's a Freedom Pop... Uh, what is it called? Shit, I got it here on the website. Hang on. Freedom... Oh, it's the Freedom... Freedom Spot Photon thing. Anyway, what this is is a little like free wireless thing. It's not 100% free. You have to pay $99 for a one-time payment to get this device. It's a security deposit just for this little device. And uh, what this does is it gives you mobile uh, 4G. You charge it up, and it gives you about six hours of free wireless. And they give you about free 500 megabytes per month, so you can't stream music and all that good stuff on it for free. But you can uh, you know, check email, get a blog post done, do all that other... like. Uh, book some shows, you know, get some shit done on the road that you need to get done. Uh, say you got shitty Wi-Fi at some club and you need to use Square to swipe someone's card and, you know, get a purchase. Boom, you know, get this boy set up. It's awesome. And uh, I heard some people even replacing their phones with this. Like crazy stuff. Like I think even the CEO unlocked like an, I, an I, uh, iPod Touch. And just put uh, one of these, not one of these guys, they have like little sleeves that fit on those devices. And they got free 4G and the guy just uses that and it's way cheaper than, you know, with AT&T. The only bad part is it's not a lot of coverage, so there's not a lot of places. But I'll put a link down that in the show notes. It's really cool, I'm still playing with it, but I was able to get on the internet last night at this club and it was great. So... Uh, before I move on and get into the main segment of the show, I just want to talk about real, or just let you know real quick that I'm having a webinar Tuesday. Uh, that's Tuesday, March 19th, uh, depending on when you're wa watching this, 2013. Tuesday, March 19th, 2013 is uh, going to be on booking shows and getting more shows for your band, uh, the techniques and the, the shit you have to do in order to book your band. And uh, I've been the booker for my band for a long time, and a lot of people have been asking me how to organize themselves and get this shit done and get themselves more shows. So I'm going to go over the techniques and the technical aspects of booking shows. And, you know, you go through this webinar, you'll be kicking ass at booking and getting more shows than you can shake a stick at. Who says that, shake a stick at? I just said that because I'm rambling. But anyway, let's go on to the main part of the show, which is promoting a song. So I got a list here. I'm going to read through this list, get through this pretty quickly because I know your time is valuable. All right, uh, but uh, this was inspired by Luke Rode. He left a comment on, uh, I think, uh, the Facebook.com How to Run a Band. He left a comment when I asked, hey, what do you want me to blog about? And uh, yeah, he wanted to know about how to prepare to release a recording and do get all the press and EPKs. And uh, just to let you know, I'm not actually an expert in this. This is just me brainstorming and planning because I'm doing the same shit for my band right now. Uh, we have a couple of recordings and uh, one that I want to do something really special for, a really cool campaign. Then we got two we just finished recording, so we're close to having our own EP. Yeah, we're, we're a really young band, so we don't have a lot uh, under our belt yet. But there are some things I want to do with singles and promoting singles. And uh, this is actually helping me because I was, uh, you know, I need to put a plan together. So this is the beginnings of my plan for promoting a song. So take it with a grain of salt. This isn't stuff that's 100% proven. But, you know, picking through if you hear something you like, you know, I highly recommend that you try it. Because uh, 
what I see most bands do is they record their stuff, they have their CD release show, and then that's it. Then they expect people to start coming to them, and that shit don't happen. No one comes to you. You have to go to them. You have to hustle. So these are a whole bunch of hustle tips. There's another podcast called the Lifestyle Business Pod. Uh, life, uh, yeah, Lifestyle Business Podcast. I can't freaking talk today. And I'm not drinking wine like last time. This time I'm using uh, my new Modoc coffee cup Marvel character. Uh, and I got tea in here, so I'll wait until afterwards to do the wine. But I still can't talk. See how that works? Just can't win. <laughs> Anywho's, let's get this ball rolling. First one, uh, you know, as I was talking about earlier, have a damn website. Get that website out there, put your songs on your website, make them easy to access and hear. You don't want to go trying to get press for your shit and no one can hear your music. Make it easy as hell for people to listen to your music. And the easiest way to do that, that you have 100% control over, is your website. Have a one page set up for music. I guess I'll just show you a quick example of my website. And the only couple of really good songs we have up right now. There it is, loading. I just used Bandcamp right here and set them up. Uh, you can even buy directly from the links here, or you can download stuff for free in exchange for an email. And I got stuff with my live music right here. So, yeah, have a page right there. And, of course, on the page there's an easy like email subscription list. So, yeah, you have that one spot. Get a couple things done. Also shows my upcoming gigs. Have that nice landing page on your website for your music in a nice, easy-to-play format. Don't make, people, don't make people jump through hoops to listen to your music. If you're an unknown band, don't be putting that like-gating stuff. Like Facebook, you have to hit like before you can hear our music. You know what? I wish there was a middle finger button for that. To say, fuck you, I'm not going to hit like so you can spam my Facebook account. Just don't do that. Don't make people jump through hoops to listen to your music, you know? Do other things that, as incentives for them to like and do all that crap, but you know, don't, don't, before as even a person's heard your music at all, you put like blocks like, no, can't hear the song until you put in an email address. This might work for like big names, but it isn't going to work for your uh, band just starting out. It's going to be more of a hindrance than anything else. Share, be open. <laughs> so another one is be on Spotify. So once you got your music, I usually uh, submit my music to CD Baby. And within a week or two, your music's in all these digital stores, including Spotify. Now, one of the reasons I say be on Spotify is because everybody's on Spotify, and it's easy for someone to, it's easy for you to put your music on a list uh, or a playlist of other songs, like your local music or whatnot. It's easy to share out with maybe somebody in the press that wants to hear it because they already have Spotify, they're already listening to stuff, they want to add it to their playlist of things that they're already listening to. So Spotify is a great way to do that. Just pop it in there, and uh, it's easily shareable. You can share the link to your song, and uh, not really doing that to make money. You're doing that to get the music out there on a platform that everybody's using, including the press and the media. So make it easy for the press and the media to use your stuff. So once it's on Spotify, it's much easier to get your songs out there. Make a YouTube video. It doesn't have to be elaborate. Just uh, have a couple pictures and maybe do lyrics. Actually, a uh, just had pulled up a unofficial hate breed video somebody put up, but anyway, I'll hit play here, and you see it's just the lyrics going on in the background. It's nothing to write home about. You probably you can be fancier if you want, but I mean, at the very least, have your music up on YouTube. Have the lyrics playing there. It could be even you just like shots of your band playing live. It doesn't need to be the same damn song. Just something there to let people read along and listen to the music. YouTube is the number one place for people to discover music, so you need to be there. Uh, in addition to that, if you have any cool keywords, make sure you fill in, uh, I guess, for those of you watching the video here on YouTube and not listening to the podcast, there's a description, I'm pointing to the description section of a video, of the video, right underneath. And the very first thing should be a link back to your website, right there. So you want people to go back to your website where you have that nifty email sign-up form, which you can start sharing more stuff with more people or get them to your shows. So it's not necessarily promoting uh, the song in particular, but it helps lead people back to you and your website. There's someone from the press who's watching this. They can see that link, and they can go get more. And if they want to hear more of your band or someone wants to book your band or someone just really likes your music. 
So make sure you always put that link right there, the very first thing in any YouTube music video you do. Because uh, if you put it somewhere else, see the show more button, it's going to disappear. If you put it right there, the very first thing, it's guaranteed to be there. It'll show up everywhere the video shows up with a description. So do that. And the next thing would be understand the story and meanings of the songs, of your songs. Highlight and amplify those stories and those meanings. Because that's the shit that makes a difference. If your song means something, then that gives you, uh, uh, I don't know, what's the word? Uh, it gives you the means to make it special, to appeal to someone, to turn it into a story, to match it with something. I guess that if your song's about beer, you know how to pitch beer. If your song's about overcoming um, some adversity, like, I don't know, getting... You fought through cancer, you know, that's a really inspiring thing. Or Adele, you know, you went through a horrible breakup and and this is how you're working with it. You have a song, you have something that, the me there's meaning in the music. Understand those meanings because that gives you uh, access to figure out different ways of promoting your music. Uh, the press, they like a story. So if you can say like, hey, um, I shouldn't be saying um, by the way. I should always be cutting out the ums, but whatever. I'm a real human being. I say, um. <laughs> you should, uh. Where was I? Damn, my brain just stopped. So I do this on the fly and I don't edit. I'm just like, here, go, boom, record. But uh, they, the press like hearing a story. So if you're talking about something that's meaningful, then it gives something for a news article to write a blurb about. And you're like, oh, you know, this band right here just said this really cool experience you know and they just share it in their song and this is what the song means and blah 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 you know and it becomes something more than just a song it's also a story and that story is much easier to share and talk about and get people interested in it that's a great way to promote your stuff um if you also uh it doesn't even need to be about the music and the lyrics if there's other stories behind making the music for instance uh the craziness of making your album the cds came in at the last minute you know uh the drummer's hair caught on fire while he was playing drums. You know, just all those little stories and behind the scenes things make the whole album experience uh, better. Makes it more accessible to people. It makes it more newsworthy for media to pick up on it and go, oh, wow, that's something weird. Uh, tell me more about that. So you can get interviews and shit like that. When you have something interesting, uh, the news media always needs something new and interesting and newsworthy and something that tells a story that's interesting. So do know that shit. Know what your songs mean. Uh, know the quirkiness behind your music. Whatever that may be. And uh, I know some disgusting bands, so I know they're probably scratching their heads right now as we speak. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, create a list of publications and places that, uh, like the more popular places, or even your local newspapers and... Uh, radio stations and shit where you would like to be featured and start cold calling them get on the phone with them start sending out emails start talking to them find them on twitter find the editors find the names of the people that write for this shit find out where they're going to be you know just be there contact them hustle it always have your music ready always be con have it on a, a you know you got to think it's like oh monday i'm contacting this tuesday contacting these people and then you go through the list and it's like oh shit i hit the end of my list Everyone can contact. You know what? Start back at the top. Do it again until you get a bite or they tell you to fuck off. Whatever. Don't stop. Just keep hustling. You know? Um, it, I guess uh, Luke was asking about EPKs. I don't like EPKs. I like... I think they're expensive and I have not heard of anyone saying, Oh shit, my EPK was so awesome. It got me all these opportunities in press. I have not heard that yet. Having a cool story or a great YouTube video and a clean site where things are easy to access and contact you, those things I've heard of people getting opportunities from. I've never heard of someone getting an opportunity from their EPK. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, I just haven't heard of it. So I have, until people are asking you for that shit, I wouldn't pay for it. Uh, it's just, it sounds silly to me. I mean, when you have a website, that's the same thing as having an EPK. So invest your energy into a website that you can own the format for instead of an ugly-ass EPK that nobody wants to open. That's my advice on that one. Uh, until people are asking for it and you can't do anything unless you have it, then even question why they want it. Because I found a lot of places are just old and outdated, 
and they don't quite understand things. Like, there was a freaking pizza place asking for a uh, EPK in order to play there. And I was like, fuck you. I just put my website. They won't know. They're just out of touch. They don't know what they're doing. They just feel that's what they need to do, and that's what they're supposed to do. They're out of it. Anyway, moving on. So, once you get past those uh, publications and the uh, normal radio stations, you should be checking out uh, all the cool uh, podcasts that are going on in your genre of music. It doesn't even need to be your genre of music. Or your genre... Ugh. What am I talking about? Just check out the internet radio stations, podcasts, and vlogs. A lot of these people, you know, they could just be focused on music, but they could just want music to play in the background. They could want music to play, uh, you know, as intro or outro music. Look at these people, you know, here if they got like, you just offer like, hey, you can use my music for your your vlog or this episode or, you know, there, there's a lot of things you can do there. These people need music, they need good music, they need music they're not going to get in trouble for for using. So don't be afraid to reach out to these people and say, hey, you know what? You can use our shit on your podcast. In fact, I think there's a pod safe. I haven't looked into it yet, but there's a network of uh, music where you can put your music in, submit it, and say it's pod safe. So anyone starting a podcast can grab your music and start using it as long as they give you attribution, which gives you credit, give you credit for what you do. So I was also, you know, I, I do believe there's a couple of other places where you can submit your music where people can use shit for free without fear of getting in trouble, like some Creative Commons license. Check into that stuff. It might be worth putting in there and getting your music shared in a way and promoted and getting people into your music just through these. Because sometimes a lot of people listen to these podcasts. It's worth it. So know your internet radio stations. They always need new submissions. Podcasts, they're probably always looking for new music. And vlogs are video uh, blogs. So people are doing shit on YouTube or on their site. And they got a regular video uh, thing going, like a podcast. But it's like their own little TV show. And they need music. Check them out. Uh, be discoverable. That means uh, using services like Pandora and Last.fm and Groove Shark. Even though some people question the validity of Groove Shark because they don't quite pay the uh, artists or record labels like they should. But that's another thing altogether. People are listening to Groove Shark, so it might be worth having your music there if you want to get fans. And the thing is, when you're first starting out, it's more about getting people to like you and hear you at all at first. So uh, having being on a, something discoverable like Pandora and Last.fm and Groove Shark just helps you get in. If you sound like a band that people love, say your band sounds like uh, people are looking for the Beatles and your band sounds like the Beatles, then, hey, your band's going to pop up somewhere down the, the list if other people like it and think you sound like the Beatles. It's a possibility. Uh, the rankings for that stuff it might take a while for that to happen but you never know you know you get your friends to give positive thumbs up if ever they hear it on last.fm last.fm is easier to go and uh do that also uh, i think spotify also has that radio listen to similar artist type thing so you want still another reason to be on spotify pandora is weird they make you jump through hoops and i think they limit how many songs per album you can submit to them uh, you need to go through Amazon and set up a store and have a shrink-wrapped CD for them to use. I think those are the hoops you have to jump through to get on Pandora. However, uh, Amazon makes that really easy. They have a Create Space service, so you can create your store, upload your digital songs, and they'll make a shrink-wrapped album that they can send over to Pandora. Easy. Done. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you have to have an Amazon store with a shrink-wrapped CD to get on Pandora. At least last I checked. They might make things easier now, but I don't know. Uh, Bandcamp. I showed you that before where I was embedding it in my website. Bandcamp uh, also has some new uh, music discovery stuff, but they it's a really cool service where it's easy to just play and you know uh, exchange your stuff for emails and, or have people purchase your music. So be on Bandcamp. It's a really nifty service. It lets you put your embed your lyrics on their shit. It's awesome. Do it. You won't regret it. Another cool service is SoundCloud. Even though they're a little bit more limited on how much space they give you for all the music that you want to put up there, but SoundCloud is great for sharing. It's great. It, it 
embeds on tweets. You can start playing it directly from pens. You can pin your SoundClouds, your SoundCloud, uh, what do you call them, widgets, whatever. And people can comment on it stuff. So SoundCloud is great. SoundCloud is phenomenal if you combine it with another service called StumbleUpon. I guess they'll give you a picture here. Here's SoundCloud. Over here is a service called StumbleUpon. So once you have your song on SoundCloud, then you stumble it. And it gets submitted to StumbleUpon. StumbleUpon is a wonderful service where you keep you put in your interests and you stumble and it just takes you to a random website based on your interests and you can like thumbs up or thumbs down with that website and it's great you can spend hours on stumble upon and it just keeps going and going and going I would share my username but I used stumble upon to watch porn so you don't want it to be any part of that <laughs> anyways moving on there's, I was just looking at a uh, Reddit, uh, reddit.com, R-E-D-D-I-T.com, and they're a community of people that, uh, they're really cool, they actually have a community, they have, it's more of an article submission place, they, they submit like uh, things they find on the web and people discuss it and there's like a, a forum of people discuss interesting topics. And they have a whole bunch of cool topics and there's a lot of artists going here to do a uh, they do uh, Ask Me Anything sessions, a AMA sessions. You know, like Dave Grohl's been on there, Bill Gates is on there. And they have these, it's a really wonderfully engaged community. But they also have a section dedicated to music. And I was looking into this before, and it seems like a lot of people are into, uh, what am, I don't even know what I'm looking for. Ah! Anyway, music right here. So, yeah, they have all the different genres of music. You can listen to music, discuss music. People are always, I think they even have a thing in there where you can't be like a major band. You have to be some like smaller band that no one's ever heard of so they can start discussing things about this new music. It's new music people haven't heard before instead of old music everyone's heard. And they also have um, this thing where you can actually submit your music and it's part of a playlist of songs on Reddit. So it's something I'm going to be looking into because Reddit is a highly engaged community of people that are really into talking and sharing. I think even Reddit like pulled some pranks where they randomly chose a song and got it ranked really high on like some top 100 charts just by everyone on Reddit voting for this one song. So it's a very interesting community. Uh, be a part of it. Do it. It's another way to promote your stuff. And doing little things like this, uh, <laughs> doing quirky little things, having ways that you're uh, doing stuff to engage with people in a, not in a normal way is newsworthy. There's a, <laughs> the way that, okay, I'll split this into two topics. So blogs and people like me, you know, I do how to run a band.com. We're looking for shit to talk about. And, you know, the smaller blogs and stuff, because I'm definitely on the smaller blog level, we're looking for shit to talk about. So when you come up with a cool little interesting story, it's like, oh, shit, yeah, cool. We need to fill we need to fill our blogs. It helps get views to us. It helps us out. You can go to a whole bunch of blogs like that, submit stuff about your band and doing this cool new thing. It's like, oh, look what I did with Reddit and this experiment whatnot. And that kind of, even though you're getting on the smaller layer of blogs, the blogs right above start looking at these smaller blogs. So the bigger blogs start looking down at what's happening at these smaller blogs. So these smaller blogs are highly accessible. So you can submit your music, submit stuff you're doing with your music here, and they'll easily chew it up. So the bigger blogs are like, oh, what's new and happening? And they see all these blogs talking about your band. They're like, well, oh shit, let's start talking about this band as well, because I gotta fill up, like, I gotta be posting 10 times a day, and I got deadlines. So and that's how it starts bubbling up the chain. So you can get up to the higher, higher, higher echelon just by focusing on the bottom. And there's a wonderful, evil book called Trust Me, I'm Lying. Then he talks about a lot of the stuff that, uh, questionable tactics that you can employ for your band. The stuff this guy did being a publicity agent for a lot of big name celebrities. And he outlines what he did. He doesn't do it anymore, but... He outlines what he did do and how easy it was to manipulate the system. 
to get media. So trust me, I'm lying. Kind of breaks down how the whole media system works. And you will never trust a blog again. So it's great. Uh, it's one of the things that... So when you focus small and you go for like the smaller things, you get this community on a little small community on Reddit. You get a little small forum over here. Uh, if you have find forums around your stuff, and if you know like what the meaning of your music is, find stuff that I'm getting too much at once. But smaller blogs, smaller MP3, smaller publications, smaller things, and find those. They're more than happy to feature your shit. It. I'm not guaranteeing it, but it's more likely to get noticed by the next the next level up. Okay, enough of that. And what I was about to talk about before I got myself too confused, <laughs> I just my brain is rolling with all the different things you can do. So like, my tongue is like not wanting to do right things. So I'm gonna take this moment, take a deep breath. Me and Modoc are going to uh, enjoy a moment together. And for those of you listening to the podcast version, Modoc is my new Marvel mug. Yes. Okay, better. <laughs> so what I was talking about earlier was knowing the meaning of your songs and your music. Because if you know the meaning, you might also know that the different crowd that you could appeal to. And I love using this example because it's just classic example. Uh, it's, and I always butcher this dude's name. Jonathan Colton. Uh, he submitted a song, Code Monkey, to this uh, technology blog called uh, Slashdot. And it's for geeks and people into technology and stuff like that. And Code Monkey resonated with that community because there was a whole bunch of geeks, a whole bunch of Code Monkeys on Slashdot. So they ate it up, and that song became really popular. He started getting featured everywhere. People loved him because he just resonated with that crowd really well. So if you know the meanings of your music, you know, know the meanings of your songs. You don't need to go for the music blog. You don't need to be trying to be on the top of the music playlist or get into your local paper and get on the music uh, selection where to, uh, you know, trying to get into your local paper where they say you're the new band to be looking at. Instead, you can just go to a completely different area and say, okay, my music might fit with gardening. And you try to be the best gardening band out there, or you have a song that just is, resonates with all gardeners. I'm making shit up. I know I'm being... But, you, you know, figure out what it is for your music and your band. Don't be a smartass. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> so, now, now that you know that gardeners are your market, let's fucking hit all the places that gardeners are. And they're, you know, even TV stations, you know, that have little gardening feature segments. So make your music say, hey, you know, you can play my music. I got something about gardening. You got a show about gardening. And they go together. Here. Could be that easy. And next thing you know, they're like, oh, yeah, we need music about gardening. We don't have any. There you go. So, yeah, think about how you can promote your music that way and fit a particular niche community, a very small subset community. Sometimes going thinking big and giant and trying to compete with everybody isn't the way to go. It's going really hyper small and engaging a very avid community. Okay, moving on. Next one. Lyrics and explanations of your songs on your own site. This is a big mistake I see a lot of bands making, is they don't put the lyrics and stuff for their own music on their own website. And when people go to look for lyrics, they're taken to another website completely. Fuck that. You want your lyrics and the meanings behind your song to be on your site. So not so you put the lyrics, and then along with the lyrics, you say, hey, click here to learn... Get the background and the meaning behind this song. Or you can explain it in line, whatever. Uh, or like, oh, click here to listen to the song. Oh, we got in other songs. If you like this song, you'll probably like this song. So it's on your site. Lead people back to your site. Give something to share. It's like, hey, people, if you want to know the lyrics to my songs, go here. Go to the website. You know, check it out. And uh, instead of some other lyric company or somewhere else having the lyrics for your music, don't do that. Have it on your site. You're the owner. You own it. It's your place. And the explanations... Once you get in there, like, don't just put lyrics and just leave it and then, like, expect people are going to figure it out. Go into the details behind the lyrics and what that song means to you. Why do those lyrics, you know, even if your lyrics are just nonsense, tell people it's nonsense and here's what the vibe is behind the music. I mean, just explain it. 
explain the song, get people deeper into your music, give them an opportunity to go in deeper into your world. And once you, you might be asking what, how, what is this to do with promoting a music? If you can get people deeply engaged with your music, they're going to share your music with other people. They're going to drag their friends to your shows. They're going to hit the like button on your songs. They're going to, they're going to be the ones, I think Seth Godin calls them the sneezers. They're the ones who spread the virus that is your music. So yeah, man, uh, focus on those sneezers. Another thing to do is uh, create different versions of your one song. And uh, the benefit of this is it just gives you more opportunities to present the song in a different light. So you can have the acoustic version of your song if you're an electric band or electronic band or whatever. You can have the live version, you can have like the mellow version, you can have all the different versions of your song. And this gives you more opportunities to get people into your song from different angles, different ways of viewing it. And uh, it gives also more opportunities for the name of the song, the title of the song, people to hear it in a different way, for it to sink into their brain what the song is, what it's about, what the words are. So different versions just engage people in different ways and brings more awareness of your songs. Next. Ooh, yeah, this is the one I kept forgetting to do myself. Um, this is a good one. This is one having a regular rotation of promotion. And what I mean by that, say once a week, tweet a song, tweet one of your songs. Like, ah, well, I was doing this. I need to keep up on it. But I have a song called Cubicle Hell, and it's about uh, quitting your day job. You're just done with working in the cubes. You're, you're leaving. And that's what the song's about. So sometimes I play it on Mondays. You know, after the weekend, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck work. You know, whenever it's something like, or it's Wednesday and you're just sick of work. It's the middle of the week, you know. Or you're just trying to get out of work. I played that cubicle hell. So, but I have it on a regular rotation. So it was like either once a week or once a month. I always like bring up the song. The reason I bring up a particular song over and over again is to get people to keep listening to my music. I keep promoting it. It's like, oh, have you heard this song? And then like, or maybe you take the video version. Hey, here's the video of this song, blah, 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 and just keep going through it, you know, on a regular rotation, a regular basis, have it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, have something that you do on a regular uh, rotation. And this gets people used to hearing your music on a regular basis. They might not listen to it all, but they'll get used to hearing, seeing the name of the song, knowing what it's about, hearing it, maybe they might just press play and it's playing in the background. The more people hear it, the more it sinks in and it becomes part of their internal soundtrack and they're going to want to keep listening to it over and over again. So uh, this is a longer term strategy. You're not going to get explosive things overnight with it, but it's something that's going to take like years of constantly putting your music in rotation, always having a schedule where you're always sharing your music in that way and in a new and creative way. That's another good thing for having different versions of the song. You can do it in a, you know, a new way each time and present your song in a new way. I just heard something go, boom. What the hell was that? Oh, there's too many notifications on everything now. You don't know what's notifying you of what anymore. It's stupid. All notifications must die. Okay. Moving on. Ooh, I think I'm making good time. I think I'm making good time. Probably keep this under an hour. Okay. You with me? You still with me? Come on. All right. Let's do this. Pictures. Have a good picture with your song. Uh... Even with like MP3s, you can embed pictures into the song. So create a cool picture, you know, hire someone to do it, or you can go to uh, Flickr and look for uh, Creative Commons. And if you go through Creative Commons, as long as you give uh, credit to the person that you got the pictures from, if you found a cool picture from Creative Commons, you can use it for your stuff, as long as you're not selling it particular, but you can use it to promote your shit. And I think they even have a checkbox you can use commercially. So look for that uh, on Flickr. Uh, if you just want to buy something and not worry about any type of licensing, go to a service like iStock Photo. Uh, do I even have that up? No, I don't. But anyway, iStock Photo, you can purchase a picture that you can use you know, for whatever you want, whatever your purposes are. And the reason behind this is it gives a good, vi we're visual animals, and it gives a good visual picture for your song and your music. So you want that. You want to have the the videos, people can see moving stuff, pictures, so people have a visual aspect to your song. 
And it helps when you're posting on Facebook, you have a picture with also the link to play your song. It, you put it on your YouTube and have that associated picture with the song. And it really helps to also reinforce a branding of a particular song. So pictures, do it. Helps them with pinning as well and Instagram, all that good shit. Even though I think uh, Brian Thompson would probably yell at me for saying do that on Instagram because I'm not understanding Instagram. Shh. BitTorrent. Uh, people said they've had good luck by just sharing their music on BitTorrent and let people download their shit for free. They got a lot of publicity from it. You can control the torrent and you put a link back to your website and people come back and sign up for your stuff if they like your music. BitTorrent is another way that people discover new music. And uh, yeah. Try it out. See what happens. I don't know. I don't. This is all brainstorming. So, I don't know. It may work. May not work. You might regret it. Who knows? Who cares? Something. To, something to try. Here's a cool one. Uh, just get your current fans on Facebook and Twitter to share your stuff. Like, make it fun. Say, hey, share a picture of. Uh, here's your song. And it's like, all right. If you share the music, then we'll send you out this new sticker that we have. We'll mail it out to you. So share the song. Share it with your friends. And we'll mail you something. Or you get into our show for free. Or some shit like that. Whatever. Or we'll sing a little ditty for you. Just, like, get people to share it. Encourage them to share it. Make it fun to share it. You know, give them a reward for doing it. And uh, they'll share it with their friends. And it'll show up in their friends' timeline. And it makes it fun for everybody. Try it out. I haven't tried it yet. It's something I want to do. Little contests and little things to make people do shit on Facebook and Twitter. To, like, have fun back and forth and share things and you know, tag things and it, make it fun. Make it fun for your followers and uh, see what happens. I don't know if it's going to work or not. I could go out there and say, hey, share this and, you know, hear crickets and nothing. You never know. One time I just put up a gray picture with just a gray gradient and made a little joke and that got shared thousands of times. Then other stuff I thought sure would be shared thousands of times, like got like one like by my girlfriend. The universal uh, thing right now. Like, <laughs> sorry. Sometimes I, I think of the funniness of stuff. You the shit you think's gonna work. Sometimes it just bombs, and stuff that you think's gonna bomb all of a sudden just blows up, and everyone loves it. So sometimes there's no rhyme or reason. Sometimes you just keep throwing shit at the wall until it sticks. So here is the stuff. Here's shit to be thrown at a wall. This is everything I'm sharing right now. Shit to be thrown at the wall. Start throwing it. Throw that shit. Okay, I'm getting a little bit wonky. Sorry, I didn't get much sleep last night. Again, I never get much sleep. Sleep is for people who don't have a band and a day job and a blog. Oh, Modoc, take me away. <laughs> okay, moving on. Focus. Uh, Musicians also don't create a lot of packages for their music, uh, different packaging for the music, different ways for people to engage with them. So you give the one little 90 cent download or 25 cent download, whatever, you know, you just got the song or the CD or something, whatever, the boring little small thing, and that's it. That's all you give your fans. You don't have anything else. What you should do is have a super duper package. You should have that CD combined with the live version of the CD and uh, then package that with a bonus song. And so that's like your middle package right there. And then you got like the super high end package that's really expensive. It's all autographed and personalized. And, you know, it's, I don't know, you went out and got unicorn horns and put on it with glitter. I don't know what you did. It's just some like cool, crazy project, one limited edition, high end products. And, the reason you do that is because having a higher end product drives sales to your middle and lower end products. It also gives people a choice because they people sometimes they want to have that higher end product. So fewer people will buy it, but that one person will buy that one hundred dollar stupid thing that cost you five dollars to make. You never know. So you just have it there, but it's mainly to see drive people to the middle and lower ends. And uh, actually, what it does actually is drive people more to the middle product. And this is a weird psychological thing. I'm not making this shit up. It's actually been documented by uh, Robert Cialdini. I'm probably butchering his name. And he wrote this book called uh, Influence. Or was it Persuasion? I think it's Influence. And he also uh, co-wrote a book, uh, 
yes, 50 ways to get people to say yes, or some shit like that. I'm butchering crap. I'll list it later when I do the show notes. But, uh, yeah, what he talked about is once you start introducing uh, these products, then people, like, they'll see that there's a super cheap one and the super high-end one, and they'll gravitate towards the middle one. So you can get more sales for your music if you have, like, a middle-tier package of stuff you can sell to people. So that's a, another little psychological thing. Give people more choices to buy the, your music. Um, so that's another good way, reason for you to make different versions of your songs. So you can pop them together in these packages. Right. Moving on. Um, oh, almost to the end. We're almost to the finish line. Stay with me, everybody. We're going to make this. We're going to do it. <laughs> uh, this is something I really, really, really want to try. I know it's a little going to be a very time intensive and it's entering into a, a market of people I don't know not very familiar with but I want to start offering my music for free to film students and like local media local local film companies that are small low budget type film companies and the reason I want to offer my music for free to them as long as they put out the name in there is really to get my music one to get my music out into their movies get it heard you know be part of the soundtrack Two, it's awesome to say, hey, yeah, we're featured in movies, so it gives you some cred. Three, um, really, the, the, you help out film students. Eventually, maybe one of those film students are going to be someone huge, like five to ten years from now, working on something big or have a big, giant connection. So your music is suddenly, they're, like, they're going to think of this cool band that gave them free music, see if they're still around. You're still around because you're still killing it five years later, just using all this cool ways of promoting your music. And then they're like, okay, we're going to give this band $50,000 for their song to use in our new blockbuster movie. I'm exaggerating. It might not be $50,000, but uh, you do get quite a few thousand dollars for some of these deals. Had some friends, they got a song into a movie and got a few thousand dollars to help pay for their recording. So, yeah, it happens. So yeah, I, I would like to get into that scene, uh, but I know nothing about it, so I don't even know where to start with that. So, I don't know, if I'm hanging around and trolling f film students in colleges, I don't know, but I know it can be done. Uh, another like cool little thing, maybe you can just do locally, I don't know if it'll be good, or what it would do, or if anything, probably nothing, but uh, you know... See if your music can be played in between songs or at, by local DJs or people at clubs. See if they have a jukebox or something you can fit your music into. Try it out. Try and see if they'll put your music into rotation there at a local club. Who knows? Someone might walk up and say, hey, what's that song? And they say, oh, it's this weird band that made me play their music. Probably unlikely. I'm really doubting that. But yet still, shit. Wall, sticks, who knows? I don't know. Every now and then I hear something, I'm like, ooh, who did that? And I run up and say, who is that playing right now? I've done it before. I don't know if anyone else has done that. I've done it before. Oh, uh, next service is a, is a cool, fun one. I was talking about like getting music into movies. Um, here's a little bit more of a direct route. It's a service called Music X-Ray. And uh, I should be pulling up this shit. I'm supposed to. Yeah, fuck it. Anyway, I'm not going to... You're going to see my ugly mug for the rest of this video. Because I'm not typing anything else up on this screen capture stuff. So Music X-Ray is a service where you submit your music for... Like, four bucks a submission. And you can submit it to film and places needing music for their projects or their movies or TV commercials, whatever. Yeah, so it's Music X-Ray. Only four bucks. Submit, submit a song. I mean, each... Opportunity that comes up is going to be another four dollar submission you have to do, but it's only four dollars versus uh, I think Taxi Music Company is about three to four hundred dollars per year to be a part of. So uh, I mean, if you're going to do like one hundred submissions, maybe Taxi is better. I don't know, but I heard there's been good engagement with Music X-Ray, so it's worth trying out. Again, shit wall, see what happens. <laughs> this one, this last one, I'm just I don't know. I'm reaching with this last one, but B. Be a little bit weird. See what the current trending topics are like. <laughs> this is the note I made, which is hilarious. Actually, someone should do it. I should do it. I shouldn't even be sharing. I should be contacting uh, Google right now. But Google is doing this thing called Google Glass where they have these glass. Okay, I'm, I'll pull up the picture of the Google Glass shit. 
Google Glass. <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. Images. But Google Glass is this uh, wearable uh, computer. Like, it's a mobile computer for your face, for your eyes. And it has this little, like, image thing right here. But you can record stuff right from the glasses. It'll just record shit as you go when it's voice activated. And everyone's talking about this thing right now. Um, what you could do, or <laughs> fuck, and this is just an example, you don't need to do exactly this, but go to Google and say, hey, you know what, we want to be the first band ever to do a music video from both the perspective of the audience and the perspective of the band using Google Glass. We're going to be the first one ever, it's going to help promote your product. Let's do this, and then partner up with Google Glass, and get, you know, just, you might get some free tech out of it, who knows, whatever. Uh, you get on the news that way. I think it was this girl named Daria Musk. Like, as soon as, like, Google Hangouts came out, she, like, jumped on that shit and is now known as the Google Hangout girl. And she's, you know, no one else is really using that stuff, Google Plus, very much, but she's owning it, and that she jumped on that technology, and she got a lot of news and press out of it because she jumped on it right away. So that's just an example. But other things you can do is uh, do reviews of new tech come out. If you buy the new iPhone... You know, do a music video with the iPhone on YouTube. Or, you know, do a something with your music playing in the background as you review that iPhone. You know, and then you can put as the link of this thing you're reviewing, and the very first link would be to your band's website or something. You know, it probably doesn't fly, but something like that. You know what I'm saying. It's like, you can use that, your music to be the background of something else. So people are like, oh, might hear that song and go, oh, what's this song about? Try it. I don't know. I'm still, again, I got a lot of success from reviewing some like some of my music equipment, and I got thousands of views on a YouTube video for, for that. And at the time, I don't think I had any music really up and running or recorded for my band, so I didn't have anything ringing in the background. But, you know, review my equipment with my band's music, you get a lot of hits from that. People are trying to figure out what stuff to buy for themselves and they go to YouTube to figure out what it is. So use those new technologies, new toys, things that you use. Do a review of it, like five minutes, and post it up there. Put your band's music in the background. That could be a way to get your music out there. And that's it! Finished up! Hell yeah! Thanks for sticking with me. Another reminder, got that webinar on how to book shows for your band, and that's going to be Tuesday, March 19th, the year 2013. So be quick on that. I'll put a link in the show notes here so you can go over there. Um, it's going to be $20 for that. If you don't feel like paying $20, well, I do have a free ebook for you. It's called Get More Fans to Your Shows. So you can just go to my website, howtorunaband.com. Howtorunaband.com. And on the side, you'll see... Uh, Nice little email sign up form to get uh, your free ebook. Uh, get more fans to your shows. And it also signs you up so you get reminders of, you know, with these webinars coming up or uh, other blog posts that I got on howtorunaband.com. So get, sometimes you get some nifty deals for the email list. Worth joining up. And uh, that's it. If y'all have any questions, Seth at howtorunaband.com is my email address. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook. I'll put links in the website. See, that's the magical. When I point down, that means there's a link somewhere below in this video. And I am getting very sleepy, and I'm going to go to sleep now. Me and Modoc are going to go do our thing elsewhere. All right. Go promote that music. Take care, everyone. Bye. We want to hear from you. If you have a question that you want us to answer on the show, give us a call at 765-507-9474. Again, that's 765-507-9474. We can make a whole show out of your question. To learn more about us, visit Blasco at blogandestroy.net and visit me, Seth, at howtorunaband.net. Dot com. And remember to work hard and rock harder.